Hi everybody. Um, I got some really great questions about the crayon problems uh, that were assigned the other day. Uh, so I decided to do a longer video talking about uh, specifically those problems, but also uh, kind of what we're working on in general and um, some suggestions for how to approach it. I'm also trying some new ideas today on how I make these videos, so uh, hopefully it all go well. So I just wanted to talk for a minute about why I think it's important uh, that a parent watch these videos with you. And I, I think it's just, first of all, always good to be with a parent when you're using the internet. Um, and there's also this, these videos are also really for the parents too, because uh, you're going to be working on this together. Uh, you know, we're we're suddenly finding ourselves in a situation where I'm going to be able to talk to you about the work and um, give you examples and and give you things to practice, but you're going to have to do a lot of the, the learning on your own. And I think uh, it's helpful if I can, if your parents can hear um, how I talk about these things and why I think they're important. The next thing I wanted to talk about was how this connects to some things that we've already been doing in math um, earlier in the year. Uh, what, what we're really doing is we're thinking about um, making and breaking numbers and uh, for the, the mathematical language for that or the math words are uh, composing and decomposing numbers. Um, if you think about decomposing like compost um, numbers can be broken down into smaller parts um, and, and, and that's what that means and composing is putting them back together so you can also just say making and breaking. One of the things that we worked on earlier in the year was exploring ways to make up uh, numbers. So, for instance, it, we might try to find what are all the ways to make the number 6. And what that means is, you might remember that we would do essentially this, is that we would uh, take 6 cubes. Oops, that's not what I wanted. Sorry. Okay, so we would take 6 cubes. And we would find what are all the different ways to break them up. And sometimes we would do this with a partner. And what you would discover is that there were ways like this. We might put one cube aside and then link the other five together, and so then we would know that one way would be to do, uh, have one and add five more. That's a very terrible five. Okay, that's much better. Um, you know, so that would be a, a way to uh, add up to six. six. Um, and that's what addition means, is to put two things together. Then we might uh, try two cubes on one side and that would make four on the other and we would have two plus four equals six. We would then continue this process until we had uh, figured out all the different ways that you could um, make five. People also discovered that you could do things like this. What if you split them into three groups uh, and they each had two in it? So you would have two plus two plus two. Now that equals six. And this is really great because you're seeing that there's really many different ways to make six. It's almost like these are all secret names for six. Um, and, and, you know, that's what equals means, is that they're the same. Um, so six is the same as one plus five, and six is the same as two plus four, and six 
is the same as 2 plus 2 plus 2. So that leads us to start thinking about why are we going to focus on this with the number 10. And really, 10 is just a very important number in terms of how we do arithmetic. And that, you know that's how we uh, combine and break apart numbers. Um, and there's reasons for that. Some of them are simple and some of them are complicated. But in a you know nuts and bolts kind of way, because I, I like to think about math as a toolbox. You know, the, it's a we have a, all these different ways of thinking about numbers are tools that we can use to help us solve problems. And so, if I really understand ten and what ten is and why it's so important, um, lots of different kinds of math problems are being, are are going to become easier for me. So our goal, um, and we're going to really, it's going to, we're going to work up to this because we really want to understand why this knowledge is important and how to use this knowledge, not just to have it. And I think that's the really um, important thing in learning math is to understand um, why the things that you're practicing are useful and important. Um, not not just to to be able to do it. So, at you know at the end of this, it would be great if everyone could look at these expressions. Uh, you know, six plus four, two plus eight. Uh, how about one plus nine? And say, hey, th these are all different ways to make ten. And just to know it uh, in a snap, to just recognize you know these different pairs of numbers uh, that add up to 10. And, you know, if you really have that down, as you do more complicated things in math, it's, it's just really going to be helpful. But I don't want to jump to the finish line. I don't want you to just memorize them, because if you just memorize it at this point, we haven't really explored why it's useful and what you can use these ideas for. The other thing about this is that the, the games that we play um, that use this idea, like Make Tens Go Fish, um, are really helpful learning tools because um, using these ideas in that context is going to help it become more automatic. Um, so I, I would definitely spend some time playing the games. So this leads me to directly addressing one of the really great questions I was asked, is why, if mastering these ideas about 10 are so important, why do we go from making 10s to making 12s? Um, isn't that just confusing things? Um, and you know what? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. And one of the things that it's important to do when you're learning math is if you feel like you've gotten something and then the next thing you look at makes it confusing, that's probably a good time to take a break, to let your brain uh, do the work of really understanding um, what you just learned while you're doing other things. But the reason that the 12 crayons problems were next was to then take the idea a little bit further, um, to start thinking about, well, what about bigger numbers? Um, and if we think about 12 specifically, one of the things that we see that's really cool is that uh, one of the ways to make 12 is to do 10 plus 2. And we've talked a little bit about teen numbers um, and how they're 10 and some more. Um, but this is starting to connect those two ideas together that um, a, teen, a teen number is 10 and some amount more 
because they still obey all of the rules that all other numbers do. You know, that's what I think is really wonderful about learning and teaching math is that everything fits together. There's no such thing as a bad strategy as long as it's mathematically valid. Um, and the more ways you look at something, the more ways you'll have to understand it. And it, it, it just helps in every single way. Now, some of you might be wondering um, what this strange little uh, thing that I've drawn here. Um, it's, it, it's, I was sort of doodling, and it's called a number bond. Um, and what that means is it's a way to show a part and whole relationship. Um, and, and that just means that the, that, that relationship we were talking about, that six has with, say, four plus two. If we know four plus two is six, we know that those numbers are a way to make six. And a number bond is just a way to show that. Um, so if, if I draw one of those sometimes, that's, that's what I'm trying to show, is that, that six can be made by four and two, you know, just, just like we were just looking at, you know, it's no different, uh, you know, than we were thinking about it here. You know, that's six plus four. That's not what I'm talking about. Ah, here, we have four and two making six. Note, of course, that in addition, it doesn't matter what order we add the, the numbers in. Um, and we can talk about that more in a different video. That's not really what this video is supposed to be about. So I just want to talk a little bit more about um, a few things about learning math. And uh, what's on my mind is drawing story problems. Um, and I want to talk about it in the context of what we've been doing here, which is making 10. So uh, I'll tell you a story, and we'll see if we can draw something uh, that shows it and helps us solve the uh, math problem that's inside it. We're going to be practicing uh, drawing story problems a lot, and it's an important skill because even if you find that uh, some of the problems are things that you can solve mentally, uh, and that's important too, and we will, as you know, we do practice mental math, and we'll practice more mental math uh, this year. Um, it's also important to be able to... Uh, draw and write things that show how you thought about it. And it's important to practice these skills, even if you're finding that um, you can do all of the work mentally, because eventually the, the, we're gonna, you will start learning things in math that are too complicated to do in your mind accurately. So it's important to practice these uh, drawing skills um, whenever we get the chance. So here's our story problem. Biff and Maria went foraging for dandelions. Biff found three dandelions. Maria found seven dandelions. How many dandelions did they find in all? This would actually be a good uh, moment to pause, um, maybe find a piece of scrap paper, and uh, think about what you could draw to show this problem and help you solve it. Um, so... I, I, I hope you will pause it uh, now, and I'll talk to you in a minute. All right, so hopefully you've, you've given this problem a try, and um, let's let's think about um, what we can draw here. So first of all, earlier on we drew addition like this. Two, three, four, five, six. Nope, need one more. Sometimes I, I like. Sometimes I, I, I have you skip watching me draw and think things out like that. But sometimes I think it's helpful uh, for you to see like what exactly I do uh, when I'm making these drawings. So 
Uh, right here, I, I I should probably double check to make sure I have everything right. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna p point and touch each one and count it out loud. One, two, three. Okay, that matches for Biff and his three dandelions. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, that so that uh, fits with how many dandelions Maria should have. So. What I've drawn fits the problem. Um, and th then I can use a strategy like this if I want. Um, people, actually, what works well for a lot of people I've been noticing is if then if they number all of the uh, boxes together, seven, eight, nine, oops, that wasn't a very great nine, okay, ten, and then you see that it's 10. And for, for some of you, you probably knew right away that this problem was 3 plus 7 equals 10. And it's great to write it out that way at the end. Um, if you can, it's not necess necessary. The main thing that I want you to be able to show is that there are 10 in all. Uh, that's the more important thing. Practice. Practicing the, writing the equation is, is good, and you should try, but if you can show that you understand what's happening in the math, that's the more important thing. So, some people, though, like to spend a lot of time uh, making really detailed drawings for their math, and, you know, at school, sometimes it's a little bit of a, a problem, because it's very slow. And then you don't get to practice as many things. But if you're working at home and it makes it more fun for you to make really detailed drawings, like maybe you'll, you'll draw a picture of Biff. And yours would probably look much nicer than this. I picture Biff wearing a hat. And then he's got his three dandelions. Those are really not very good dandelions. And then here's Maria. Um, she's happy too. And I think Maria has long hair and it's kind of curly like this. Um, and then I draw her seven dandelions. I didn't know that dandelions look exactly like lollipops. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Don't be afraid to count out loud. Um, as you're probably noticing, I, I, I do it. Um, and it helps you be accurate. And being accurate, that means not um, making mistakes, is, is really helpful in math. And I use strategies to help me be accurate, like, like counting out loud. So then, of course, you know we could do the same thing, and we count all of the, we we count all of the dandelions together. We find out that there are three, and there are seven, and if we add them together, it equals ten. Both of both ways of doing this are totally fine. Um, and just another thing, and I'm going to talk about this more in a separate video, um, it's 100% fine before you draw, and in fact, I think it's a really good idea, um, is to use objects, and they could be anything, um, three of something and seven of something, and, and, or I have you collecting your 120-somethings, you could use that for these kinds of activities, and lay out three, Lay out seven, count how many you have all together, then draw what you did. Um, uh, or make a number line and use the number line to do it. I'll, I'll talk about um, number lines for addition in a different video, too. Um, I know this video has gone on a little long, um, but just a few last things I want to say is that it's really important when we're learning math... Um, to find ways to do it that make us feel confident in our math work. And it doesn't matter if 
the, the way that we're doing it feel simple. Counting on our fingers is one of the greatest things we can do because, hey, first of all, there's 10 fingers. That's this great number that we're working on. Um, but also just because it's really easy to be accurate with your fingers. And the more you do it with your fingers, the more you'll be able to do it in your mind. And then what you'll find yourself doing is that you've done it in your mind, but then you're doing your fingers to check. So use whatever strategy makes you feel confident in the math you're doing. And then I really want everyone to try to practice drawing their math. Um, it, it's Some of it seems kind of simple now or or kind of frustrating and boring now just to like draw so many things. But it's a really helpful skill because when you're learning more complicated things in math later on and you'll need even you'll need more complicated kinds of drawings. And if you've already started thinking about how to draw for math, um, that won't that won't feel scary for you. So I, I hope this was helpful. Um I, I hope it didn't go on too terribly long, um, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk again soon.